Ned, I guess if I have to be honest with myself, one of the reasons I like to study and think about consciousness is the, is the hope, uh, not the belief, but the hope that maybe there's something non-physical about consciousness. And if that's true, it would, it would re, uh, innervate the world and what it means and whether it's a religious view or, a, or, a, or a spiritual view or something like that. Yeah. And to be honest with myself, I, th I would think that's the case. And I've been buoyed somewhat in the last, uh, uh few, uh, years by seeing more and more serious philosophers who are not religious taking a view that maybe there's something that we have to go in consciousness that is beyond the physical world. Leave it at that. Yeah. Uh, I think you disagree with that. I do disagree. I, I do think, though, that one of the reasons why people are friendlier to that view is that they have become more and more aware of the explanatory gap. Uh, you know, I think there was a period where people didn't take the explanatory gap seriously, and now they do take it seriously. Well, why was that? Originally, because I've always felt that that was a, a critical yeah. issue, but, but why is that? Why was there a time when people didn't take that explanatory gap seriously? I think it was a holdover from behaviorism. For, maybe I should say what the explanatory gap is. Okay. Right. So it's, the, it's, the, it's really the fact that we have no idea how to understand why the neural basis of a conscious experience, even if we know what it is, is the neural basis of any experience at all, mm -hmm. or that particular experience. Okay, right. So I think there was a period where people tried to dissolve the explanatory gap. They were more like in the behaviorist kind of mode. But as that behaviorism, like the Dennett-type behaviorism, has uh, kind of dissolved away, people take the explanatory gap more seriously. And once you take it seriously, you have to take dualism um, um, seriously, too. Um, and so, dualism would, would, would come in many forms. It would, it, it's not, when people hear that, sometimes they mean the classic religious immortal soul, but there are many yeah, other forms Many of other dualism. forms, yeah. So I think we shouldn't give up on the physicalist point of view. It's been extremely effective for every single thing that we've studied. You know, the, mo the most recent example is life. People thought that that right. um, had to be understood in some non-physical way. Right. Reproduction had to be understood in non right. some non-physical way. No, we now understand how how we can functionally dissolve everything to do with life into separate functions like reproduction, um, you know, metabolism, excretion, um, uh, just a lot of functions, and then ever, all those things can be explained physically. Could you ever be convinced that a physical explanation of consciousness would be impossible? Well, I could certainly be convinced that, um, you know, God was speaking to me out of a burning bush <laughs> that was burnt without being consumed, enough miracles, and I'd give up. Um, but anything that I'm likely to experience, no. Or, or, okay, so 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 now we have well, now we have uh, you know the pure physical world. And we have God, put God aside. But I mean, in terms of in terms of of, uh, of research, I mean, if, if, if hypothetically we'd say I, I take you a hundred thousand years into the future, yeah. and we now understand every synapse and everything in the brain, and you still got your explanatory gap. Yeah. Uh, look, enough time. If enough time passed, I would give up. But I don't think we've had that. Oh, no, okay. Time. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to explore. Yeah, and I don't think understanding every synapse would do it for me because okay. that's this bottom-up approach that you see a lot of okay. in terms of the brain mapping project. Right, right. Um, I, I really don't believe in these bottom-up approaches. I think you have to try to find concepts at a higher level that can allow you to understand what's going on in the brain. Okay. So at, at, at the bottom-up, lower-level approach, we know when we can what the progress is. We'd have to understand every molecule and every synapse and yeah. every connection. I mean, it, it's way beyond our current science, but if you go 100,000 years in the future with a growth yeah. of science, you can imagine, because the numbers, if you're dealing with 100 billion neurons and, yeah. and uh, 10,000 connections between them and take all the permeation, I mean, it's a, it's a finite number, and you, yeah. can, you can be able to model right. that at some point in some way. Right. Um, but so, so that I can understand how it's conceivable that we can say that, look, we've explored the options at some yeah. future date. But right. the other, in terms of higher order categories, it's not clear to me how I would know I'm at the end of the line. Yeah. Well, my view about the explanatory gap is our best hope is some kind of conceptual leap that allows us to understand what's going on in the brain in a way that we just hadn't even considered before. Uh, if you go enough time with no such conceptual leap, you might have to draw the conclusion that we're never going to get it, and then dualism becomes a real option. 
And if you were in that position, from what you know now, and you've, you've studied all the different different philosophies, which kind of dualism uh, would you be more inclined to uh, move towards? I don't think it's possible now to answer that question because it depends what what the op, what it. I'd have to see what the what it seems that the obstacles are. Uh, we just uh, bottoms up. You, you understand every brain connection, and you've simulated a million different ways. Yeah. And yeah. the other is that you know you've, you've you've tried all the higher order concepts, and none of them yeah. are making much progress in 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 uh -huh. dealing with that explanatory gap. In other words, I'm asking of of the various dualistic theories, or or I, not even yeah. even on dualism, or, or things that are not directly materialistic. Yeah, there are some fuzzy ones on the border. Yeah. Uh, do you think any of them have any credibility? No. <laughs> <laughs> they all seem like, you know, just as subject to explanatory gaps as physicalism. I mean, just for example, to say, oh, it's the soul. Yeah. I mean, that is not explain that's not an explanatory thesis. Right, right. So I don't know of any explanatory thesis, whether dualist or physicalist. You know, some people pr propose panpsychism, but that of course has the unsolvable problem of how the little bits of consciousness combine into a big consciousness. Um, you know, why is it that the consciousness in the molecule in my thumb is part of, um, uh, you know, my right. consciousness? Right. Right. So I don't see, I see even less hope for those things than I do for the physicalist approach. So I don't see any approach that um, uh, shows any sign of solving the explanatory gap. <laughs>